Welcome to the Riot Podcast, where we have practical discussions on how to share your faith, see the news from God's eyes, and answer some of faith's hardest questions. Welcome to the Riot Podcast, everybody. This is uh, one of your hosts, Bob Shoneman, along with Pete Robertson. What's up, gentlemen? And live from the Caribbean, Barry Rice. Hey, everybody. It's so good to be a part of this. I hope you're doing well this week. So the guys, the guys that are just listening have no idea what the Caribbean thing means. So you've got to watch our show on YouTube, and you'll get to see uh, our backgrounds and kind of see the fun places. So Barry is not in the studio today. He's up celebrating his birthday in they Virginia. What? I said, y'all kick me out. I kicked you. <laughs> <laughs> so happy birthday, Barry. How you doing? Hey. You know, uh, it's it's great. It's it's good to be another year older and wiser, hopefully. Right? We do get wiser when we get older. We should. And our bodies start changing a little bit. We... I haven't seen my mom for like a year and a half because of COVID. And uh, uh, oh, her, cool. her birthday is a March birthday as well. So we're really excited to celebrate our birthdays together and have an incredible blackened ribeye steak last night. I got Ooh. to... Move into uh the conversation first so it was great really good times and <laughs> he did he got the food in he beat me to it and that was honestly my next thing i was going to talk about too so you beat but i want to hear more about this black and ribeye that sounds amazing mm. did you did you kill the fatted calf when you got to virginia no sir i did not but we went to a, a great restaurant and, and had a good time and uh the blackened is a is a, a very special way to prepare a steak and i like it that way it's really good yeah me too it tastes it tastes really good well that sounds amazing i just uh wish you a very happy birthday that that's awesome i'm glad you got to celebrate with your mom and uh, you guys it's it's spring break here for a lot of our kids so we've got opportunities to travel it's awesome Happy birthday to <laughs> right? you. Woo-hoo. Happy birthday to Barry. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Ah. Now we're going to get canceled. Okay, here's off my address for all those listening. You can send my birthday <laughs> present to. Right. <laughs> yeah, they could do that too. Yeah, right? With Amazon, it could be yeah. there tomorrow. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Send well, it's St. Patrick's week. Yeah. Well, well, is that really a thing? Well, just wait, wait, I had this thought. If you want to oh, donate to my birthday, donate to the Riot Podcast. Yeah, there you go. I like it. Did you guys catch that? Riot Podcast. In in lieu of flowers for Barry's birthday, send um a donation. Send donations to the Riot Podcast at riotpodcast.co.co. Amen. There you go. Send it. Yeah, so awesome. Um so it's St. Patrick's Day tomorrow or yesterday when you're listening to this more than likely and uh before the show today guys i i, I filled up my crock pot i got uh, the corned beef in there simmering with some potatoes and carrots and and i tried you guys remember tyson we had him on the we had him on the show a few right. weeks ago well he suggested instead of using cabbage use baby cabbage right well brussels cabbage, sprouts though. Oh, Brussels, Brussels sprouts. sprouts. Oh. So I've never done that before. I'm going to try it. I'll let you know next week how that how that turned out. So, um, does your family eat that? No, I'm the only <laughs> one. So I got a whole crock pot uh, full of corned beef and and stuff. But they'll eat the potatoes and the carrots, but they don't like corned beef. Mm. My wife is. I love you, Crystal. My wife is half Irish and she doesn't eat corned beef. <laughs> Never had corned beef. Did I don't that think. originate there? Is that what Isn't we that crazy? include? That corned beef I, it's got, I guess her mom never made it for, her. and her mom is all Irish, so I don't know. So happy, happy birthday, Judy! So if you're listening to this, you you got a birthday shout oh, out that's too. Cool. Yeah, my so. friend's uh, birthday's on St. Patty's Day. Happy birthday, Mike! He's actually my accountant. So that's awesome. Yeah, there's I, a lot I of never birthdays forget. going on. Yeah, and he's like, he might be listening to this. He's like his redhead. What's you know, his name? His name's Mike. Hi, Mike. Happy birthday. Yeah. I don't know if he does, but I think his wife might listen. So we'll find yeah, out. Yeah, They'll let us England. know if they're listening. I lived in, in England, England for about uh, nine months. And uh, the place that I worked, there was a lot of Irishmen. We call them patties. And yeah. uh, they're just an incredible group of people. And, uh, you know, they'll be partying all week and having a great time. And 
Hey, if you're listening to this and, and you're in Ireland, a t- shout out and tell us where you're at. We want to hear and yeah. uh, celebrate it and uh, tell us something about you. Yeah, that's cool. I, I love my Irish friends. I'm just thinking that they have such a heavy accent that they're speaking English, but I really cannot understand what they're saying. <laughs> I mean, it is so heavy, some of them. Were they, is that what you experienced with your Patty friends? Absolutely. I, yeah. They talk slow. Yeah, but, but their accent is really hard to understand. But uh, it's it's great. I, I love the accent, by the way. Oh, I mean, me too. I Absolutely. wish I could talk that way. Some some uh, English are like that as well. You know, some Britons are. It, they talk in such a with a hard accent that it's kind of hard to. They always say we have the accent. Though. Yeah, but it's not yeah. just the <laughs> accent. They have different words, and they use words well, yeah, different yeah. too. So it's yeah. not just the accent. That's true. It is hard to understand. Yeah. We've taken we've taken some of their words and we've done the opposite with it. So what they would use, we would use something in the opposite. That's just kind of how America goes, man. We'll take something they have and we'll just drive on the other side of the yeah, street. Yeah, yeah. We'll just make it up. We'll just bring it up. Yeah. The things that get me, like the lift and what, like biscuit or something. They, they just different words. But anyway, speaking how of did, biscuit, how does St. Patrick's Day become all about green and and uh, you know anything about that? You know about St. Patrick? I did a little research. Yeah, talk about them. So I I don't know why, but I just thought it was, you know, maybe, you know, a guy from the 1500s or something like that. No. He was born in 385. Think about that. So he's about as far removed from the Apostle Paul as we are from... Um, Wycliffe. J- w- John, yeah. John, w- say that again? Wycliffe? No, Wycliffe? Not, yeah. Oh, no. Whitman. Was it Whitman? Yeah. Was George, who was a George, uh, I think the preacher like, in the early 1700s. That's who I'm Wesley. trying to think of. Well, you have Wesley, Wesley. Whitman, yeah. um, Whitcliffe. But isn't that crazy to think yeah. about? You know, like, that's how far removed he was from, you know, the the beginning of the church and Acts 2. It's pretty, it's pretty crazy to think about. But he wrote this poem that I thought was pretty cool. And I wanted to share with you guys. Tell me what you think. I think this sums up. Well, um, before you get to that, St. Okay, Patrick, yeah, he was a very significant role in the early Christian church. And so when uh, for Mission Travel Tours, one of the travel companies that we ha- that, I, that I run, we put together a St. Patrick kind of tour that goes to Ireland and, and, and studies, you know, his history. When are Barry and I going on that with you? Yeah, it'd be fun. And and so in that on that you tour, I was trying to solve, man. So- <laughs> We we need to go on some of these trips. You talk. right? Let's do it. Let's. We. Even I'm serious though. Even I've been talking about this. What were you saying about all talk and no action, no, no, no. Mary? I've been talking about this. We got to figure it out. If I were to come up, here's the deal. If I were to come up with like our our stay, our pickups, our some of our food, our hotels, all of that, and, and the tour itself. If I were to if I were to pay for that, could you guys come up with the airfare? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's figure this out. Let's let's plan that. Okay, so we'll make that happen. Hey, um, I'm going to my wife to promoting huh? these tours if I haven't been on it. <laughs> right? <laughs> you just it just realize, doesn't feel right. You just realize that he has broadcast this, oh. so now there are a lot of people to hold him accountable. Uh, yeah, well, we're going to make true. it happen. It's going to happen. I promise. We're Including gonna happen. our executive producer. Yeah. It's Thanks for chiming in, Christine. We love hearing your voice. <laughs> So what St. Patrick was, he was, I was trying to figure out, is he more Catholic or is he more Christian? And he really was before the Catholic Church even formulated, uh, you know, for, uh, you know, their, their church. And so he was like before that. And, and I would say he was like the Re- Reformation before the Reformation. He was like way before. He was, he was like following the Bible before Catholic, before, you know, the early, ch- or the Christian church that we know. And, um, and so he's kind of a big deal. And so his, you said reformation when I was doing some research on him, they actually used that. They called it the Irish reformation. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a little bit different. That's a, a that's for, you know, d- different people that came on, was but it? he, they used a lot of his doctrine from that. And there's probably people that are listening to like, well, I know a lot more. Well, you probably <laughs> you do. You probably so do. Don't, <laughs> don't come at us, but th- we know the basics of that. And we've researched a little bit of that. So he is 
is a big deal. So that's what we're saying. And so the words that Bob's going to speak now, it really resonates because there's an actual song from this, um, this poem that he wrote, and it really ministers to me. So Bob. So you're saying it's not about corned beef and four leaf clovers and leprechauns? No. I wonder if green was like his so favorite color. So confused. Yeah. So why does Chicago put green dye in their river then? Did he go there? What? Did he go there? Someone, if you guys know that re that answer, to let us know because we're not going to look it up. So if yeah. you want to look it up, study, tell us. All, yeah. <laughs> if you know why Chicago dyes their river green. Right. You know what I did read, and maybe this again, you guys know more than I do, but there was a there was a separation between the Protestant and the, and the Catholics, and the Protestant was like orange, that yeah. was their color, yeah. and the and the green. and the Roman Catholic was green, so yeah. that's kind of why yeah. it, they 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 dove into all green. So maybe that's why they dyed their river green. Who knows? I think they just like the party in Chicago, to be honest with you. Always. <laughs> But their pizzas anyway i i digress Go on. The, oh i'm sorry here it is christ with me christ before me christ behind me christ in me christ beneath me christ above me christ on my right christ on my left christ when i lie down christ when i sit down christ when i arise christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in every eye that sees me, Christ in every ear that hears me. Wow. That's really good, right? We could change the world if we could live by that. I think he fully understood the importance of Christ in that if we, like Barry, you said this before our show and our show prep today, if we don't have Christ as the forefront of what we say, if the Holy Spirit is not leading this train, it's pointless to do this. And um, it is, it is right? It's Christ about everything. Very thoughts? <clears throat> yeah, John 3.33 uh, just resonates with me that he must increase. Mm, yeah. And I must decrease. And uh, man, I, I just love that poem that Christ is everything mm. to him. And... Uh, He's everything to us, and I hope that he's everything to you guys. And think about that today as you listen to this. How can you work the word Christ into every conversation that you're having? Oh, you know, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of that, next week we're going to be talking about sharing your faith and how we can learn to bring Christ into every conversation that we have. I am looking forward to that conversation. That's going to be fun. You know, I was thinking, uh, Bob, it, yeah. before we start today's topic, um, let me just pray. Yeah. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you, praise you uh, for this opportunity that each of us get to uh, listen to this podcast. And Lord, I just pray that you would speak to each one of our hearts. Lord, that you would help it resonate within us, that you would bring to life, Lord, your words, your truth. And Lord, that you would change us and transform us. Yeah. And Lord, help us to just love you all the more as Barry just said, that we would decrease and that you would increase. Our heart's desire, Lord, is that the world would know who you are. You are so good. You are so faithful. You are so true. And so, Lord, we just praise you and thank you. So, Lord, have your way now. Speak through us. Have your, have your tone of voice come out of ours. Lord, may your kindness and your love speak to people's hearts now. We love you, God. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pete. <clears throat> I know. I got a frog, what, too. What, yeah. Yeah, I had one earlier. It's like I could drink water. I think Barry had a frog earlier. We had a bunch of frogs going on. <laughs> Thank it you, Jesus. It could be the pollen. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Could be the COVID. No, it's not the COVID. So we over the last few weeks, we've been going over um, just talking about end times, talking about the rapture. And our title this week is After the Rapture, the Invasion of Israel. Hmm. But before we jump into that, Pete, would you... you it would be awesome if you could just give us like yeah. a recap of where we've come from and kind of where we're going. And then kind of we'll we'll park at this uh, in Ezekiel 38 and 39 uh, for today's show. OK, yeah. So we we first started that um, that the church era is taking place. We kind of talked about in the first week, you know, the Israel's role. We talked about United States role in the end times. Um, and, and we understand that, and when you're talking about end times of prophecy, we're always talking about Israel. So 
the church era is is gone after the rapture so we spent about a couple of weeks talking about the rapture and so the leading up we use first thessalonians 4 to get into that the um where we talked about the latin vulgate where it says the rapturis or rapturio which is where we get the word rapture so it is in the bible so there's a lot of people that say that it's not in there it is in there uh if you want to translate it that way um, and we also talked about the church era of Revelations 1, uh, chapter 1 to chapter 3. And then in chapter 4, it says that, you know, meditata after these things, after what things? Well, that's after the church age. And so we went into that. We went into the, the church era. And so that era is coming to an end. And we also talked about the things, the signs of the times, things to look at. We talked about apostate state of mind, the rebellious state of mind. Um, we talked about how the world right now is in chaos. There's a lot that's happening. Uh, we talked about the significance of Israel becoming a nation in 1948. We'll talk about that a little bit more here today, too. Um, but all of that is leading into where we're at now. So the church is now being raptured. Well, last week we talked about the, how there's going to be a judgment day for the Christians and for the believers that we're going to be standing before the Bema seat. Uh, and that Jesus is going to see, you know, we're going to be able to cast our crowns before the Lord. We talked about the crowns last week. Listen to it. If you didn't hear, it was a great show. And then this week now, we're going to talk about what happens next, the invasion of Israel. And so many people don't really understand Ezekiel 38 and 39. So we read it. We try to understand it in context. Again, this is how we view the next current events. And so we're going to, we're going to, we're walking through the end times prophecy in chronological order, the best that we understand it. Um, we're using the book by Ron Rhodes. Um, we're also using a lot of Joe Rosenberg. Um, he's a, another, um, you know, eschatologist that lives over in Israel. I've, if you guys get their books, you can read them. I know that they're, <laughs> we, we stand by them. They're really good. There's the book for Ron Rhodes. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. But anyway, so we're just going to talk about that a little bit today. And, and that kind of brings us to where we're at, Bob. Yeah. So, and this is the interesting part for me while I was reading Ezekiel 38 and 39 and studying and reading the book that you guys were just talking or that you were just talking about, Pete. Um, so we believe that after the church has been raptured, so the church age has ended, yeah. that there's going to be some time before the tribulation occurs. And this was, this was kind of new to me. I had for some reason, maybe, you know, just growing up, that's what I had heard. But my belief was, you know, the rapture was kind of the start of the tribulation. And it was just really studying over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that anymore. So we want to talk a little bit about that. So during this time, this time between the church being removed from the world and the tribulation begins, there's this time where there's going to be an attack on Israel, right? And so that's really what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, there was never in the Bible, the rapture could have happened in any time. So when when Jesus was here, even in the apostles, they believed that even within their generation, the rapture, nothing significant had to happen for Jesus to come back and take his bride, his church, right? And so um, what's significant about where we're at today and why we believe that even the rapture is close to us today is because we're seeing that in 1948, when Israel came into the nation, that that now the temple can be be, re, be rebuilt. And so we're going to be talking about Israel today, but that's it's a major significant role. And so Israel, everything about end times is always about Israel. It's about Jesus's first love. God's first love is for Israel. And, and he's not done with them. And so um, now that that's happened, and now that we understand Matthew 24, 9, 25, and the end times, and, the, and all of the apostate, and all the, the rebellion, and all, you know, mother against father, and father, sister against brother, and all this stuff, the chaos, the lovers of money, and greed, and all of this. I mean, it's at all-time high right now. And so th that, nothing had to happen for the rapture. But after the rapture, okay, there's nothing in the Bible that says there's there's not a, a significant time before the first tribulation happened, before tribulation happened. And so we believe that the invasion of Israel, Ezekiel 38 and 39, from the best that we understand, from reading some of these different scholars and things from our study, we believe that there is at least three and a half year gap. At least is from what we understand. After the church has been removed, we're up in heaven, we're spending time with the Father, that there is a significant gap and then tribulation takes place. And so this invasion happens during that time. And we'll explain why we believe that as we go through the show. Yeah. And, 
and Pete, to be clear, this this um, invasion, this isn't the this is an Armageddon, right? No. This is a, it's a separate yeah. thing. Armageddon, yeah. we'll talk about in future shows. That's the very last, the end of the end um, war of all the world's going to come against uh, the Israel and, and all that. We'll talk about that at the end. That's Armageddon. So that's a that's a show down the road. Yes. Okay. Yes. So do you Israel? Well, do you want to talk about the next kind of statement? So Israel, well, if, um, we're just reading our notes here. Yeah. So be with us. Uh, Israel will be secure and semi-safe. So here's, and so according to Ezekiel 38, 8, Bob, you yeah, want to me read, read that. that? Yeah. It says that Israel will dwell securely in their nation before the attack. So go ahead and read that real quick. Yeah. It says, after many days, you will be mustered. In the latter days, you will go against the land that is restored from, um, from war. The land whose people were gathered from many peoples upon the mountains of Israel, which had been a, con a continual waste. Its people were brought out from the peoples and now dwell securely, all of them. So Israel is going to be secure. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I asked the question, and, and this is for all of us. I mean, do you see that Israel becoming more secure today? I mean, do you actually see that happening? I mean, could we say that there, there's a, pro, um, a probability that this could be fulfilled soon? Well, there's been a bunch of peace treaties, yeah. in, you know, in the last couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's more people it, it, on their side. There's more people standing up for them. The, the line seems to be drawn a lot more firmly, right? Who's on and who's off and who's not with them, right? Yeah, I mean, it's like, I. what was that? Uh, Egypt and Jordan did that peace treaty back when. Yeah. And so they've they've had that relationship with Israel. And then just recently, I guess, in in President Trump's era, they, they came Bahrain, United Arab uh, Air Emirates, Sudan, and Morocco. And so they're able to now fly freely from those. You know, I was, I was doing a tour, talking about mission travel tours. I was doing a tour from... Uh, there's a the Footsteps of Paul tour that's in Turkey, and I was going to do a Holy Land tour with that. But I couldn't fly from Turkey to Israel. I would have to fly from Turkey to Greece, have a layover, and then go into Israel. So I changed that tour around to have the tour end in Greece so we can have a direct flight from Greece into Israel. So there's still no fly, but if they want Israel wanted to go to the United Arabs now in Emirates and, and Sudan and all those, they can now fly to those places without having to do a workaround. So you can't fly from Turkey to Tel Aviv? Nope. You can't, and it's just a puddle jump over. But yeah, I was going to say it's really close. Yeah, so it's actually going to take you like five to six hours just to get to Israel because you have to go to different places to get in. Yeah, is that fascinating? But let's talk about this. So, so um, Israel is now the eighth most powerful nation in the world. So let's just try to comprehend that. This is a speck. They're in the center of the world. There's a speck. They're the eighth largest, most powerful nation in the world. They are a force to be reckoned with. Let's just be. Let's just say what it is. Um, and I believe that Israel probably feels secure in their military power. I really do. I believe that there's a security that they sense because they have, I mean, they take like our, from what I understand, they take our, our equipment that we make them or bring them and they make it even better. They modify it to, to fit any better. <clears throat> they also, is, is incredible. What? Their missile technology is incredible. Yeah. It's and they've taken what we've done and made it even better. And in, in what, from what I understand, they have a plane, they have jets in the air 24-7. And so they're constantly are on guard and ready. So they believe that they're constantly having a group of people that are going that way. So I believe that they feel secure because of that. They feel secure because now there's this peace treaty that's happening. You know, more and more things are going on. I, I, they are, you know, the Israel's the highest credit rating uh, ever so they like every bank and everybody thinks that what they come to Israel they believe oh man they're gonna pay back their debt they have such of that they're one of the leading exporters of fruit in the world uh, you go to um, Europe you're gonna get a Joppa orange right so all of Europe gonna have that they're, I mean they're one of the leading experts of fruit they're one of the leading experts in the tech industry I mean, uh, leading experts, leading people of the tech industry. They have their second largest to new business startups outside of the United States in the world. So, pharmaceuticals I mean, I, too, right? Pharmaceuticals. Yeah. I mean, we can go on and on and Diamond. on about. Huh? Diamonds. Yeah. So they're, they're big on the diamond cutting 
and yeah, and the making them pure. Yeah, they're the number one distributors or or cutting of diamonds. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And and so just if we think about it, there's a lot happening with Israel that would make them kind of feel secure. So this so why we're saying that is because of Ezekiel 38 verse 8. It's it's setting up for the invasion. And then it goes on and it talks about the hook that needs to go into the kings of the north. And so I think that's what we're going to get into next is talking about that hook. So they feel secure. They need to be feel secure. They need to feel like they're coming into it. And then now they're going to be getting, now there's going to be the invasion. And so um, now that Israel feels safe, let's, it sets it up for the attack. I was trying to look up the hook. I was going to read that verse. You know where it is? Um, no, I don't have it. I just, well, we're just telling you to read, read the Ezekiel um, 38 and 39. Yeah, on your we own. keep referring so, back to that, but so yeah, you can go through key, that. 38 and 39. So the next, um, yep. So Israel is invaded by a northern mili military coalition. We find this in Ezekiel thirty-eight and nine again. We don't have time to read over it all right now, like we said, but we we'd like you to go there. But here's some of the. So, I, I yeah. um, Pete, maybe you can explain this. But they they mention like Magog and you know, and but people think it's Russia. Why do you why do you think it's Russia? And do you think you you know what territories and what areas are going to come against Israel at this time? That they're talking about in Ezekiel thirty-eight and thirty-nine. So when they when they start getting into um, Magog, they start talking about Gomer. They start talking about Meshach and Meshach and Tubal. Um, you can follow that lineage back to Japheth. So so one of Noah's uh, sons. So if you look at so Noah had his son Japheth, Ham, Shem. And, and Japheth went north. So Japheth, from where they went to Mount Arad, they went up north. And you can follow his lineage. And you can see that he had a son named Magog. He had a son named uh, Gomer Pyle. I, I always wanted to say That's that. That wasn't really his yeah, name. Yeah, but it's really cool. And then and then they had uh, other, they had uh, Meshach, he had Tubal, and he had other ones. And so that's, it's, for, it's it, they established themselves in the northern region, the northern part of Europe. And so when we look at those times now, what we find is Russia, we sign Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, uh, Af Afghanistan. You're really just making these up at this point, No, no, aren't these you? are, they're the stans. It's like when you read the Old Testament, you have the Gurdjieff, the ites everywhere. The ites? Yeah, so now in the modern time, we have the stans. The stans. Yeah, yeah, so we changed okay. it over. So that's, that's kind of that area. <laughs> and so that region is going to come against us. And did you know, Think about this. And then, well, let me finish this, the other one. So there's not only that, then we're going to have uh, Persia, um, Persia. Well, Meshach and Tubal, there's a part of Turkey that's going to be there. But Persia, remember in 1978, they changed over everything to Iran. Actually, in 1935. So 1935, they were, they were Persia, Persia. And then they changed to Iran. So that's now they're Iran. So Persia is going to come against them. Ethiopia, but when they were talking about in the Old Testament, the Ethiopia, that was Sudan. So there's a northern part of Ethiopia where Sudan and South Sudan come in down in Africa, that the northern part of Africa, that's Sudan. And then Put, which is Libya. So that's next to Egypt. So you have Egypt. And then to the left of that is Libya. And then Gomer again. And then Beth Tokamar, which again is Turkey. And then Armenia area probably in, in as, as Azerbaijan. I'm not good is, with that. Pete, is it just because the name changes? Is Egypt... Is Egypt part of this or no, not part of it? No, That's we don't find Egypt. We don't find Saudi Arabia. We don't find Jordan. Um, we don't find any of that in there. But but here's let's talk about the hook. Isn't real it quick. funny that those are kind of some of the places where we they just had peace treaties? Yeah. That's bizarre. Well, they are there, but but one of the what was surprised that just had a peace treaty with Israel was Sudan. And so Sudan, though, is a part of this. So Sudan is going to renege on that peace treaty mm. and come around. But here's, so we talk about the hook. So what is that hook? Um, let's think about it. So the United States is out of the picture. Okay. So the United States has rapture. So we're, <laughs> we're caught up. Go ahead. China's not a part of this. Who is? I said, China is not a part of this? Not now. That come in Armageddon. So that's when they talk about the kings of the east, the Orient. Yeah, we're going to get into that for Armageddon. We'll talk about how China comes into play. But right now it's Russia. But would, would Russia ever attack Israel if the United States was in game, in play? Think about it. 
Would Russia? No way. Would, no way. No, no way. There's no way. No. Today? No. 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 So they would have to, the United States would have to reject Israel, right? United States would have to reject some of the support for Israel. When Donald Trump was president, he was way pro Israel. Biden, I don't know as, as much, but I know that he still supports Israel. And I know that there's there's still that connection that we have there. But but for for Russia to even have a sense of coming in, there's gonna have to be something happen in the United States. And so I believe that because the United States has been raptured, now now the United States is probably in a scramble. There's been a three and a half year gap after all of the Christians been taken away. Now, now Pete, to be clear, the rapture happened all over the world. It just wasn't a United States. No, rapture. absolutely. Yeah, okay. But I'm talking about Russia coming into Israel. United States plays a big role right. there. And so now that United States has been wrapped, uh, you know, a lot of there's a probably an issue or chaos that's within the United States. We lost some of our power. Maybe there's there's a lot of people. There's a lot of Christians, followers of Christ in the United States. Right. So that could be a hook. Uh, another hook could be um, Israel decided to go to Syria. They decided to, you know, take back land in Syria or try to take their northern region back. And the reason why that would be significant is in 2017, if you guys remember, Turkey, Iran, and Russia formulated a treaty to take care of Syria. So they all came together. This is, I mean, just think about it. The end times is now. It's, it's close. That just happened in our lifetime in 2017. And so they, Russia has always been a part of, of Syria. They've always had their equipment there. It's and, right on the border of Israel. And why is that? Why, why is Russia so concerned with Syria? I don't know. Do you know? I, I think it's because they need a port on the Mediterranean. That's the main reason. Yeah, they're landlocked on that side. Yeah, and they do have their ships there in Syria. And so that is a big, big deal. And so that now could be a hook. So Israel could... I mean, maybe they have another prime minister during that time or something takes place to create that hook for Israel or for Russia to say enough. We already know Iran hates Israel. So Israel wants, I mean, Iran wants them dead. I mean, they when they formulated with the Ayatollah, I mean, they put in their language that we want to obliterate Israel. I mean, that's, there's so much blood, bad blood. But people don't realize that before 1978, Iran and Israel were friends. Before the Iran controversy, there was it was peace with that. People don't realize that. I didn't know that. Yeah, but so after 1978, when Ayatollah came in, it changed the whole language with Iran. You guys could check me out on that. This is this is true. And, uh, Correct them in Facebook. Yeah, yeah, do that. But this is true. I, I did my research. But that's that's kind of the that's kind of significant. So that again that in time again, it really is that it, is mind blowing. Yeah, so it's like if you look at everything that's been set up we're here guys so pete what if you're talking about these hooks what if what if israel just had a preemptive strike on iran would that be enough to trigger this that could be a hook i mean think about it because there is that alliance i mean russia is majorly a part of iran part and of then, syria part of turkey because if the united states was weakened by the rapture or something else and, you know, we just weren't as strong as we were. And Israel were to just go attack Iran because Iran says every day we're going to wipe you off the face of the earth. And then there was nobody. They would almost be isolated all by themselves. Right. And something like that might trigger yeah. it as well. Yeah. So, I mean, there's going to be a number of events. But here's the, here's the big picture. So after the rapture of the church, there's going to be an invasion of Israel from these countries. Okay. And, and what will happen is they are going to come with, I, from what I understand, five, six of their military power is going to come. Who? Most of everything. Five, six of who? All of these countries gotcha. are going to be coming against Israel during this time. And when you read Ezekiel 38 and 39, what you're going to find is that Israel is going to win. They're going to defeat Israel these armies that are coming against them an impossible battle they're absolutely when you look at libya and you look at sudan on the bottom part you look at iran coming from the side you look at russia and all of these countries coming from the top they are completely surrounded yep. the the absolute impossibility for them to win is 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 at play 
But it says in Ezekiel 38, 39, that God did this to show that he is God. He wanted the world to know that he is God. And so all of these countries that came against him, God says, I will protect my people. I will, I will bring forth victory for them. And so that's kind of what it says. Did you see something in him? Yeah. yeah, I think it's verse 16 and 38. He, he finishes it by just saying, I vindicate my holiness before their eyes. I mean, he, God is going to take credit for this victory. Absolutely. It's going to be so clear that it, it, was like, it was God's doing. Yeah, this is just another, uh, in my mind, it's another uh, David and Goliath, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's exactly it. Yeah, that that is who Russia, Russia is the giant that that it, that will come together with these other countries and will be making fun of. Come on, Israel, you know, and 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 David rises up again. Uh, Israel rises up like David, and will cut the head off of uh, the giant. That's really good. Mm -hmm. And again, so after so after this happens, Israel becomes, and we're going to talk about this in a little bit, but Israel becomes like good to people israel's like whoa dude israel's kind of like a cool player on on the thing you know and we'll talk about a peace treaty <laughs> the cool kids huh? yeah the cool kids on the block <laughs> but before that it talks about in ezekiel 38 18 and 19 it, that god's wrath comes against magog in the prince of that. And I believe that when it talks about prince, when you see in Ezekiel 38, 39, and it says the prince of Meshach and that uh, Meshach or whatever, I can't even say it, but that I believe it's talking about a spiritual text. So when you read in the Bible, when it starts talking about the princes and different things, that's a spiritual being. And I believe that he is going to obliterate that region because it says that it says that there's going to be read that Bob 38, 18 and 19. There's going to be sulfur and hellfire and burning 38 verses yeah, 18 and 19. Just to set it up, I'm going to start. I'll start at 17. Okay. Get my glasses right. Thus says the Lord God, are you he whom I spoke in former days by my servants, the prophets of Israel, who in those days prophesied for years that I would bring you against them? But on that day, the day that God, Gog, shall come against the land of Israel, declares the Lord God, my wrath will be roused, is that right? Roused yeah. in my anger. For in my jealousy and in my blazing wrath, I declare, on that day, there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. The fish of the sea and the birds of heaven and the beasts of the fields and all creeping things that creep on the ground and all people who are on the face of the earth shall quake at my presence and the mountain the mountains shall be thrown down and the cliffs shall fall and every wall shall tumble to the ground yeah did you go to 22 yeah i can go i will summon a sword against gog on all my mountains declares the lord god every man's sword will be against his brother with pestilence and bloodshed i will enter into the judgment with him I will rain upon him and his hordes and the many peoples who are with him, torrential rains and hailstones, fire and sulfur. Wow, what does that sound like? So, I mean, that is really, what does that sound like? So he's going to use a form, it sounds like, of a nuclear bomb. That's what it sounds like. Or there's going to be some sort of radiation. I mean, it talks about how um, for seven years, there the fire, the burning of the of the the weapons and stuff, yeah. the guns and stuff. So that kind of gets back to where you said there's going to be a gap, right? Yeah. So, well, we'll get into that a little bit okay. here in a second. But yes, yeah, seven years we'll have that. And then that for seven months, Israel's going to be declaring the bodies. They're going to be putting little tags everywhere of the bones. So why would they do that? I We well, can only think it's been radiation. So if five, six of their army has been wiped out, that pretty much leaves that Muslim community in Russia pretty much like depleted right they're powerless they become wiped out at that time yeah i mean go back to the bodies in, in his book ron rhodes talks about that seven months he's like you know normally uh, you know military soldiers they bury their own dead but yeah. they're like this is so clear in chapter 38 that there's not going to be anybody to bury their own dead so israel is going to have to bury the dead of the enemy yeah, I mean, it goes into the four different ways. So the first way is an earthquake. So Ezekiel 38, 19, you just read that. It says the mountains shall be thrown down and the cliffs shall fall and every 
Uh, every wall shall tumble to the ground. So how does God defeat him? One, he's bringing an earthquake. So, I mean, it's like, you know, all these armies are coming against Israel. Boom, earthquake happens. So all of the walls, everything is going to be coming down. So this is what's happening as we're in heaven, you know, sipping tea with Jesus, hanging out. Sipping tea. And playing football in the, in the big, big yard. <laughs> as we're doing that, all of this destruction is taking place. Yeah. Earthquake is going to boom. It's just, it's happening. And then after that, what does it say? The infighting. infighting. Brother against brother. I mean, so I thought of, and I think Ron Rhodes talks about this, but think about it. You're going to have all those different languages. Yep. And they're not going to be known. And maybe God could send an angel of confusion at that time. Right? He did it in Babel. Yeah. And it's so not, there's an infighting that's happening. You know, they're like, why are you looking at me that way? And they blow each other up. Barry? Yeah, that totally reminds me of the Tower of Babel with you guys. Yeah. And infighting and so forth. And then disease says after that. So what happens when there's bodies everywhere? Ugh. Disease or rot viruses the plague who knows radiation poisoning yeah if if nuclear weapons are i'm used. sure i don't know how else to see that well how else do you kill everybody how is there no survivors it almost has to be something of that magnitude the infestation of right uh, flies maggots think about it i mean it's... Yeah, i'm not hungry anymore <laughs> It's going to be some crazy stuff. And then torrential rain, hailstone, fire, burning sulfur. I mean, it's this is like a full-on beatdown. I mean, God is opening up a can of whoop butt here. It's a wrath of biblical proportion. <laughs> Any thoughts, Barry? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, people are going to realize that this, this is God's judgment and wrath. And that God stood up and said enough. And, yep. and, uh, uh, you don't want to open up the, the, the can of whoop butt <laughs> and, and this is what's going to happen. It's going to be, it's going to, it's going to, you know, we are fearful right now in the uh, COVID times and, and the state of our politics and, and all that. But I'm going to tell you what, what we're going through is going to be nothing compared to what's yeah. going to be happening here. There's yeah. going to be reason to fear because God is, God is 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 physically uh, stepping in with with all of this stuff that's going on. It's 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 going to be very obvious that God is is saying, "Get away from my bride. Get away from my girl. Get away from Israel. My my true heart. Get away. You you have come against me when you came against Israel." Yeah, yeah. And that's the other reason is is now that you know the church is gone, his first love is still there. You know, he's still going to deal with Israel. And so like there's a, I mean, back in the Old Testament, we saw how just one angel would wipe out all the army, right? I mean, God can do whatever he wants, but here it is. He's, Israel's back in play and Russia and, and all these Muslim countries are thinking that they're going to come, you know, poke that bear. Well, that's, they're going to have another thing coming. And so, but you know, there's something it says in, in Ezekiel 39 um, verse 6, it, God uh, specifies or, or points out Magog. It says, I will send fire on Magog and on those who dwell securely in the coastlands. Um, and then it talks about seven years of burning weapons. And that is why we believe that the attack will have to have their rapture. Um, because how could, if talking about, you're talking about the rapture, how yeah. could that happen after seven years that we believe that? Um, there has to be some sort of gap in order for there to be a peace treaty. So the peace treaty has to happen, and it, that doesn't happen right afterwards. That happens after this attack. And so, um, but Russia gets the brunt of it. So I believe that God, I think a nuclear bomb or something comes into Magog or that northern region where it completely just annihilates it, completely takes it out. So I think uh, Russia has something coming against them. I mean... I, I know that's probably not politically correct, but from what I understand from Ezekiel 39 right there, God's wrath is turned especially against Magog. Any thoughts on that? You know, guys, I, I want to remind everybody that this being after the rapture, all of the Christians are removed. Yes. And, and when you remove all the Christians, evil is rampant. And, you know, when God would hold back his judgment on nations, it was because of one righteous person, a few righteous people. 
but all of the righteous people are taken out. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there is, there is nothing to consider other than they are coming against uh, Israel, the, my first love. And, and, and uh, there's no reason to hold back because these people are not for me. These people are not with me. These, you know, and uh, God, God sends his judgment and, and that's, that's going to be a, a rude awakening. And yeah, and, and it's, it's going to be surprising because Russia is so large, so powerful. And, and they, they, they feel like nobody can mess with them at this point. And, and they rally the rest of the Northern troops there, the other countries, and they come against Israel, this, this little David. And man, it's, they're going to be blown off the map. God's yeah. There, judgment. There's going to be people that were left behind that know that were church going people that are going to see this. Um, but the true followers of Christ, the ones that were the elect, the ones that were set apart for um, God will be caught up. We will not be experiencing this. We will not be going through some of this judgment. Um, we will not be experiencing the Antichrist. But again, so after Israel defeats, just imagine what happens. So after Israel defeats the this army, okay, the rest of the world are going to stand in awe. So this is what God says in Ezekiel 38, 9. He wants the world to know that he's God. So they're going to be going like, how in the world did this little nation on its own just obliterate this mega huge army, five, six of the army? How is that possible? And God is going to say, because of me. And so there's going to be peace at that very moment in Israel. So there's going to be a... Um, there's going to be something where people are going to like, hey, we need to make friends with Israel. We need to, let's make a tree, a peace treaty for Israel. And we believe that is the open door for the Antichrist to come in. It sets the stage. It sets the stage. And so the rapture happens, the gap in between the rapture and this taking place, this invasion of Israel, this Magog defeat come in against Israel, the God stepping in again, wiping out everybody. And now the Antichrist comes on the stage and he says, hey, Israel, let's make a peace treaty. You know, and then at that time, it opens up the door for the temple to be built because now the Muslim countries that were coming against them before are like, dude, we're not coming against them. Go ahead, man. You guys are the powerful force. Or You're they've the been destroyed in the, in the, you know, with Russia. Yeah. Or they were destroyed. And so now the temple can be built. And we've been told that the pimple could be milked in 12 months or 10 months. I mean, it'd be, wow. they already have the plans. They already have, they have already been wor working towards the temple preparation. You know, you move on and read in Ezekiel 40, Ezekiel 41, 42, it's talking about this new temple, 43. It's going to be talking about it laid out. Well, the, the, we don't need the temple in the church here because the Bible says that our bodies are the temple, that God and Christ lives within us. So we don't. It says that we can come boldly into the throne room of God. But once our, the Holy Spirit is removed, the church is removed, the temple is now needed. The sacrifice is going to come back. And so because it's going to be as is before Christ came, the Holy Spirit is going to move and act as an agent as he did before. But now Israel's back in play. It's now the, that's now coming in. So that's where the peace treaty comes in. The Antichrist will set up stage there in Israel, the center of the universe. And then after three and a half years, we'll get into that. That's when the Antichrist says, I'm so good. I'm like, God, check out all this peace that I've done. One world government, everything is going great. And that's when the Israelites' eyes were going to be open at that moment. They are going to see him as a fraud. They're going to see fake news right in front of them. And their eyes are going to be open. And Israel, at that very moment, will see that Jesus is the Messiah. They will see that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. At that moment, they will know that Christ was it the whole time. And that they were deceived and they will be embarrassed and they will come humbly before God's throne and plead for mercy and grace. Any thoughts, guys, on that? No? Well, <laughs> that's just a just, lot, man. I'm just, I'm soaking it in, Pete. It's really good. It, here's what was crossing my mind when you were saying that. It was that after Israel has this amazing victory, they still kind of they fall for for the liar 
for the deceiver. Yeah. You know, it's like they, they, they know that God rescued them from this situation and they still fall for the deceiver. I know. Well, they thought he was the Messiah. Yeah. They thought that he was the one, that he's, you know, the Antichrist, that he's their savior. You know, they just had this big victory. Then then here the Messiah comes on the stage and says, hey, I'm going to bring peace. We're going to help you defeat the whole world. Crazy. And so they just, that's what they believe. But real quick, the, the four reasons why we believe the invasion takes place before the tribulation begins. Number one is the world will likely be in a state of chaos following the rapture of the church. This would be a huge effect when the U.S. is out of the place. That would give Russia and the Muslims the, the, the okay to come and invade Israel. Number two is that once God destroys Russia and Muslim invaders, this opens the door for the rise of the Antichrist. We just talked about that. Number three, now that the Muslim invaders are destroyed before the tribulation begins, the Antichrist can easily sign a peace treaty with Israel. So this we'll talk about, nine, Daniel 9.27. Right. We're going to get into that in more detail in the future podcast. And then the last one is now that Muslim invaders are defeated, the Jewish temple can now be built in peace. So now that the northern military is defeated, we now move on to the Antichrist. We will start talking about that in a couple of weeks and uh, and start exploring who this Antichrist is, what is his role. We'll get into some of those details. But I think before we do that, there's probably some people that are listening to this and just going, all right. <laughs> I don't want to be here for this. I don't want to be experiencing this. I want to be a part of the church. And and Barry, could you speak to those people that maybe there's maybe they're a little worried or fear, or maybe they're just they're not sure if they're saved or they want to make sure that they are saved. Maybe speak to those people because this is kind of a big event that's going to take place. Absolutely. And we want you to know that we don't want you going through the tribulation. We don't want you going through these situations. And we, we want to invite you to be a part of the bride of Christ and to be a part of the family of God. And I can't think of a better time to, to uh, give your life to Christ and to be able to celebrate Easter in just a few weeks after receiving the Lord. And uh, the Passion Week that's coming up, the, the Good Friday uh, idea of Christ dying on the cross and, and Easter coming up. I just encourage you to, to think about these three things, that Christ died for you, and that his sacrifice, his laying down his life so that you could have forgiveness of your sin. Why did Jesus die? Not because he was a criminal, not because he did anything wrong, but because we are sinners and God cannot accept sinners into the kingdom of God because he's holy. Yeah. And we're not. And that we cannot be a part of his bride unless we're pure and holy. And Jesus' death on the cross purchased that for us. I, I, you know, you've heard me say it before. If you listen to these podcasts, 2 Corinthians 5.21, God made him who knew no sin to be sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. Amen. You can have forgiveness of any sin that you have ever and all sin that you have ever uh, committed by receiving Jesus Christ and putting your trust not on your own performance on getting to heaven, but putting your trust and faith in his performance to gain the right to become to heaven. See, we're not offering just an opportunity to have your sins forgiven, but you're an opportunity to be a part of the family of God. And, and the family of God is that bride that Jesus is coming back to get and to take out of, of the possibility of going through the tribulation. And, and your rescuer is coming. And his Ooh. name is Jesus. Amen. And, and you have got to be ready by, by putting on the engagement ring and saying Ooh. yes. So to be that bride, you've got to, he's asking, will you be a part of my family? Allow me to forgive your sins. Allow me to put the ring on your finger. And the way that we do that is by admitting that we're sinners, by believing in Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross, that he was buried and he rose again the third day, that he conquered death, sin, the grave, Satan, and 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 illness, and disease, and everything on our behalf. And what must I do? I must repent. I must 
uh, believe and receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And the way that we do that is through prayer, by making a commitment and open up the door of our life and inviting Christ to come sit in our, our life and to sit on the throne of our life and be our Lord and Savior. Would you do that right now, sir? Ma'am, would you do that right now that's listening to this podcast? If you don't know for sure and for certain that you are part of the bride of Christ, that you've had your sins forgiven, that you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, do not wait another minute. Pray this with me. Dear God, I realize I'm a sinner. I realize I've offended you and that I don't measure up to your standard. Please forgive me. And Lord, I, I believe, God, I believe you sent your best in your son, Jesus, to die in my place. And that is how much you want it to include me. That's how much you want it to forgive me of my sin. That's how much you wanted a relationship with me. You allowed your son to die on the cross. You allow your son to be beaten and bruised. And then he was placed in a cold, damp, dirty, dark grave. But on the third day, you called him out and he is alive. And because he is alive, I believe that I can receive him as my Lord and Savior. So Jesus, I invite you into my life. I ask you to come sit on the throne and rule over me. Be my Lord, be my Savior, be my master right now. I surrender my life to you and I ask you to lead me, forgive me, and make me a part of the family of God, the bride of Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm telling you, I want to congratulate you. I want to know about this decision if you made it. Let us know. Pete, tell us how they can do that. Yeah, just log on to riotpodcast.co. And at the top of the page there, you're going to see No God. Click on the No God. Go down to the bottom. If you gave your life to the Lord, click yes. Go ahead and fill that out. That will get to us. We'd love to be in contact with you and uh, see you. This is a great show, Bob. What do you think? Yeah, I'm looking forward to um, you know we're gonna take a we're gonna take a little break and uh, come back to this in a couple weeks, um, but next week a really exciting show. We're gonna give you some practical uh, some practical tools that you can use in your Christian walk, and you do not you do not want to miss next week's show. And then the next week will be our Easter show. And then we'll we'll jump back into end times after Easter. But uh, guys, we just uh, appreciate you so much. We are just blessed that uh, you're listening and or watching. We ask that you go to our Facebook page, Instagram page, and Twitter, and just uh, you know subscribe, hit like. But man, you know what would really help us get the word out is if you would share it with a friend. Yes. If you would you know just put something in the comments. You know, just tell us where you're from. Tell us what you liked or didn't like about today's show. You know, just just say hi or comment about something we talked about. Correct us where we're wrong. <laughs> Anything. Just uh, They will do that. <laughs> we would just love to see, you know, your comments and, and hear from you that way. But it's really important to subscribe to the podcast and then on social media to make sure you like and, and share with your friends. That's That just helps us get it, get it out to more people and more people that... Uh, Hopefully we can reach and touch and uh, all for the name of Jesus. So we love you guys. We appreciate you. We thank you for listening. Cannot wait for next week. Yeah. Please tell a friend. Any final words, Barry? Absolutely, guys. Hey, Easter is coming. It's just a few weeks out. Let's uh, let's really start thinking about who we can invite to our churches and who yeah. we can tell about Jesus and who can we you know, point to the hope of the the empty tomb, point to the hope of the empty cross, point to the hope of Jesus. Each Amen. one of you can do that. I, I encourage you to do yeah. that with us. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Be blessed, guys. Have awesome a great show. week. Talk to you later. Happy birthday. Hey, thank y'all. God bless you. Have a great Bye -bye. week. This has been The Riot Podcast. If you liked what you heard today, please feel free to leave a comment and share it with your friends. See you back here next week for another episode of The Riot Podcast.